Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Camden Fine Sciences Limited Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings call hosted by Sunidhi Securities and Finance Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by dialing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Securities and Finance Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Q3 and nine month FY23 earnings call of Kremlin Fine Sciences Limited. I would like to thank the management for giving us this opportunity to host the call and would like to congratulate them for uh, successful commissioning of handling plant and expanding uh, capacity at the age also. Uh, from Kremlin Fine Science Management, uh, today we have with us Mr. Ashish Dandekar, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Nirmal Momaya, Executive Director and Managing Director, and Mr. Santosh Parra, CFO of Kremlin Fine Science Limited. Uh, I now hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Rohit. Uh, a warm welcome to you, ladies and gentlemen, to the quarterly earnings call. Uh, as we've been doing each time, we will start by our CFO, uh, Mr. Santosh Parab, giving you a brief synopsis and running you through the quarter's performance, after which all your questions will be answered by Mr. Nirmal Mumaya, MD. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ashish. Uh, good day. Thank you for joining us on Kremlin Science Q3 FY23 earnings conference call. Before I begin, I would like to clarify that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Your attention is drawn to the safe harbor statement made in our investors' presentation published on the stock exchanges and hosted on our website along with the unaudited financial statements for Q3 FY23. I hope you were able to have a look at them. As you are aware, high macroeconomic uncertainty prevailed globally in Q3, the situation in Europe and COVID surge in China. After unprecedented growth observed in Q2 FY23, we had to battle with the destocking across distribution channels and general market slowdown in Q4. Despite this ongoing deterioration in economic, macroeconomic environment, CSS Group has been able to not only increase its gross margins, but also grieve its EBITDA margin. The percentage level operational EBITDA improved by 140 basis points to 12.8% quarter on quarter, despite the demand trends impacting the operating revenue by 19.7% quarter on quarter. The revenues were also impacted by three weeks of maintenance shutdown in our diphenol unit in Europe, as well as due to softening of diphenol prices in European markets. The train was arrested to an extent by around 2% owing to favorable foreign exchange across the globe. Our resilient business model, which proactively addressed the current challenges, helped in improving gross margin, which was mainly fueled by increased yields as diphenol unit in diet. Coming to the operating expenses, the surge in energy costs in European subsidiary observed in last few quarters eased to an extent in this quarter. Subsidy to compensate high energy cost of around 15 crore was received from government of Italy, which also helped to sustain margins. As compared to Q3 FY22, that is last corresponding quarter, the energy costs in Europe still remain high. The unfavorable team trend seems to be reversing, but it all depends on how the Russia-Ukraine crisis pans out in the near future. Now, coming to our operations of subsidiary, CS Europe recorded an operating revenue of INR 99.3 crore in Q3 FY23, despite all the issues I just discussed earlier. CFS Mexico and its subsidiaries in the Latin American market were able to post an operating revenue of 88 crores and was effectively and has effectively bucked the negative macroeconomic headwinds in that part of the world. 
in year on year nine months period the operating revenues of mexico and its subsidiary have grown grown by 10.74% and are expected to grow at similar level for remaining uh, financial year cfs brazil posted an operating revenue of 29 crores and has been near to ebitda break even we have embarked upon restructuring its organization to optimize the business as also introduce a cost mitigation program to reduce at least 20% of fixed operating cost which will certainly improve the ebitda in the year to come here is north america posted revenue of 24.6 crores in quarter 3 as compared to last year's nine months period revenue has grown by 35% year on year that's a good situation looking at the the way it has been performing during the covid period we are pursuing some of some exciting business opportunity in us with some big business houses in the region which should improve the profitability of the unit substantially in fy24 we certainly come back to you when uh, the the efforts rectify cfs banglam our chinese subsidiary remain closed Uh, due to the Supreme Court action in that uh, against our partner, however, we have substantially progressed in the approval procedure for change of use of the plant to a new aromatic product, which is a catechol downstream. We are contemplating restart of the plant after refurbishing a part of it in the second half of next financial year. You are aware that our ethyl Methyl vanillin manufacturing composite plant commences its commercial production on January 22, 2023. We are con- currently operating the plant above 50% capacity, with the plant to ramp it up to 100% by the end of FY23. We are we have started the process of sampling of the product with large customers across the world, and the initial response about the product is more than satisfactory. we expect to start the supply post completion of approval process before the end of this year the prices remain high in developed markets which in fact is our target market with the quality of our supply this will certainly help to recapture our market share in aroma market as we are aware this development will help to override the current negative margins in catechol now coming to some of the balance sheet items uh date of the company especially the despite the stocking in the main market uh, that had an impact on working capital but the stress has been managed with effective financial management the overall net debt stood at 667 crore as compared to 637 crore in september 2022 the increase was mainly on account of drawing of 47 crores from exim bank which was part funding the capex of vanillin plant at that now coming to the scenario going forward especially q4 and thereafter uh stabilization of cat downstream through vanillin has led the company to concentrate more on high h2 downstream products now so products like nhq hp clonamil pdq naphtol isrg will be concentrated more for increasing their production where we have available and identified capacity in the company we feel that the macro economic uncertainty is likely to prevail in q4 but the opening of china and general improvement in demand should bring back the customer confidence the real picture however should emerge only after q1 fy24 needless to say the management of your con- company has in past is confident of facing this challenge thank you very much uh, we will now open the floor for questions Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to re- withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Pratamesh Savant from Access Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. good morning, good afternoon, sir. So my question is with respect to the Valerian facility. So just to make it clear, you are saying that it would take 
one more year for us to uh, keep on with the sampling process and the commercial realization to the company stop line would start post fi 24 is what you are trying to say post fi 23 is what santosh said okay so q1 from q1 we can start seeing yes. the commercial yes. it adding to the top line yeah okay and what is the volume uh, at 50% utilization levels are we seeing at 6500 metric tons of production of okay, only yeah 6000 tons is the capacity okay 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 sir thank you and sir on the other end uh, the north america uh, vertical of the business saw some serious degrowth in the current quarter so we just wanted to need get some clarity on that degrowth in the current quarter so no, we have posted 24 crores of turnover which is not a degrowth uh, the turnover last quarter was 16 crores in fact, we have grown 35% year on year in last nine in the nine months period. Okay, okay, okay. Sir. That's it from my answer. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone phones at this time. The next question is from the line of Raj from Arjav Partners. Please go ahead. Right. Hi. Uh, wanted to know how your FI24 is going to look like. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, so FI20 is uh, leading to uh, uh, PSI. But as in the past, as you were saying that uh, 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 this uh, from next year we will be getting the full benefit of. Uh, uh, the vanillin uh, production coming, and we are looking at a growth of, uh, as compared to this year, a growth in revenue of around 30 to 35 percent. 30 to 35 percent growth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how much? Uh, how are your expansion plans going to plan? Uh, looking at three to four years from now, you know, uh, what do you think the company should be after a while? So basically, our focus is on um, two or three uh, lines of businesses that we're in. One is, of course, our diphenol chain. So all the downstream products um, that Santosh mentioned earlier on hydroquinone stream uh, will be expanded and uh, will be built on. Uh, our aroma business will be expanded so that vanillins and some heliotropin and some other products that we have in the pipeline. And then we have, of course, uh, our blend business, which is growing at about 30% a year and will continue to grow at 30% a year. We also have some, uh, within the blend business, we also have uh, good opportunities for expanding our portfolio of uh, natural products, which is uh, what will be the focus in the next few years to address the market for um, a specialty natural products. We also have uh, our omega-3 fatty acid business, um, which will get scaled up in the next three to four years. So there is a lot of activity planned out for the next uh, few years. All right, yeah. Anyway, thanks. That's it. Good luck. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Ravi Mehta from Deep Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to check on the HQ realizations. Uh, how has it been in Q3 and uh, where are it currently? Yeah, so basically in Q3, uh, HQ, um, what we sold in Europe, the realization um, has come down because of the price, uh, gas price is coming down. So we are at about nine, around $9 or so. And X of Europe, it's even further down? Sorry, 9 euros. I'm, I'm sorry, not dollars. 9.82 9. euros was, was the average. And uh, X of Europe, uh, how Currently is it? we're selling only from Europe. Um, so really that's where we're selling within Europe from Europe. Okay. No, no, uh, probably there's a commentary that uh, probably you will now be focusing on HQ downstream because now that you've done with Van Lin, 
So I was just, uh, you know, probing from that angle that uh, as the HQ prices come off, uh, which makes sense for you to now go downstream or... Uh, yeah, so our, our focus is only on our Dahej uh, hydroquinone. So with the expanded capacity of uh, Dahej uh, hydroquinone now, uh, we have uh, hydroquinone available to us for value-added downstream products. So it's, it's from that perspective, Europe will continue to sell hydroquinone in the European market. That does not change. Okay, okay. And the uh, steep uh, drop in the power cost, the energy cost yeah. in Italy, probably that has helped you to, uh, you know, uh, report a good number. So, uh, is the price further coming down? Looking at the uh, stress in energy so what, coming off. So what what is happening there is, um, you see, the hydroquinone pricing uh, is dependent on the energy price, right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's where it gets passed on to. Um, so what was 11 euro plus um, in the quarter before came down to 9 euro plus uh, purely because energy costs came down. Um, very difficult to answer. It is stabilizing around this, but you know you don't you never know when things will change. Sure, sure. Uh, and on the blends, uh, the quarterly run rate is really uh, appreciable. Like you've been holding on to those levels. What I see is that the non-Mexican Peace is growing faster, maybe on a lower base, but uh, Mexico has been like now at a steady state for like few quarters. So can we? Uh, so is that the market saturating for Mexico, or no, there can so be another have, step jump? So in in some of the products, yes, we have very large market share. So we have a whole host of new products that we are uh, in the process of launching, launched or in the process of launching in those markets which uh, will give us the growth that we are looking at. Um, we yet continue to, uh, in the next year, we should be able to go to the Mexico market by at least 20% yeah, with those new products also coming in. Sure. And Brazil seems to be at inflection point, looking at the quarterly run rate of close to 30 crores that you're doing. Yes. So, uh, probably, you know, the, the growth here can be even faster. So, any color here in the Brazil? Yes, so I mean, growth in Brazil will uh, surely will be um, uh, will be good. But I think we have even a better opportunity right now in the U.S., uh, where we are uh, in the process of now negotiating and actually getting some large volume customers uh, in the pet food industry, which um, we hope from April onwards the business will will come on stream, and this can be substantially higher than what we've done in the past. So nothing of that is reflecting in Q3 numbers. Like if you already done 24 crores. So nothing, yeah, nothing of that. No. Okay. So this can uh, stay at a steady state and further the new client addition can happen from next year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Ame from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I missed your comment on uh, Banyan. Uh, you told that the revenues will come from next year. Why was why is that the case, sir? Banyan next year. We didn't say that. Okay. Banyan, we didn't say that next year. We have been see. We started the uh, plan only in January. Right. Second. So we are ramping up the production. Uh, we are uh, sent uh, for sampling because once the plant starts, we have to qualify your plant and send for the sampling. So we have sent for sampling. We are certain that uh, there are already samples uh, have been passed in many customers. We will certainly we'll start supplying to these uh, uh, customers before the end of the year. And in the meantime, we are also ramping up our production which is at 50% uh, at, uh, at this moment of time to near to 100% by the end of this quarter. So sales will start in this quarter some extent, but the real fund will start from quarter 124. So what are the revenues that you are expecting in this quarter from the mm -hmm. So it is difficult to say, but we feel that we will be doing a fair bit of revenue. 
Okay. Any guidance for the next year, sir? Assuming uh, maybe what is the current price of Kalini Vanilla, sir? So in the international market, it is uh, in the developed market like US and Europe, on which we are looking at that market. The prices are fourteen and fifteen dollars plus, uh, and we feel that it will remain at that, that level uh, because this, uh, as you know, a lot of vanillin comes from China. And uh, there are anti-dumping duties levied on Chinese vanillin in US, so there's hardly any uh, Chinese vanillin going to US. The prices remain high. In India, there have been at twelve, thirteen dollars, but that's because of um, thirteen, thirteen and a half dollars. That's what Solvay has been selling. But the uh, the customer in India has to also pay to eight percent custom duty on that product. So standard price in India also is fourteen, fourteen and a half dollars. So the prices are at fourteen, fourteen and a half dollars in the developed market are much higher. So we, but we are looking more on the developed market. Okay. So any, um, uh, and so uh, you have to, you know, run your plant at minimum fifty percent capacity. So uh, at least three hundred and fifty odd crores or three thousand tons you will be selling next year, right? From one day. Yes, that is the expectation. Uh, about three hundred crores or so. Okay, understood. And uh, sir, what would be your uh, gross debt? Uh, you told the number for net debt. One sec. Gross debt will be. Gross debt is seven hundred and seventy-eight, and we are sitting on hundred and ten crores of cash, and this is cash from uh, from the business. There is no. Cash line from borrowed money. Okay. Uh, so just two questions more. So, for, uh, sir, uh, can you uh, give a number of uh, profit before tax for uh, the subsidies for this quarter? No, we don't give those numbers. It's too granular and too. It's, it's. You can go and see on my website because we hold those numbers on the website. All the balance sheet of subsidies are on the website. Okay, but that will be uh, for the first half, right? Anyway, uh, is there any update on Lockheed? So Lockheed, uh, the same as the last uh, call, that uh, we have an order uh, for their first commercial battery, which we have to uh, supply um, by Q2 of uh, FI24, actually Q1, end of Q1. Um, and it's on track for that, and uh, further orders are all in discussion. So once they have uh, commercialized uh, and sold commercial batteries um, in locations, the next step will be discussed. So this is just a trial uh, piece that we are sending for them, right? No major business will come. Commercial order. It's their first commercial order. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's it from us. So thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Manan Shah from Money Bee Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Anurag Runwal here from Money Bee. Uh, my question is regarding uh, vanillin. So the prices, uh, you know, they used to be around twenty-four, twenty-five dollars, and uh, uh, they have come down significantly to. Uh, yeah, 13, 14 dollars, like you mentioned uh, uh, some time back. What I'd like to understand is that, I mean, in terms of capacity, um, uh, is it because of new capacity which has come up in Vandalin, or is it more related to demand perspective that the prices have come down? Uh, because my understanding was that, I mean, we would be coming up with significant capacity, no other player is sort of adding in capacity, so the prices would sort of, you know, there won't be a significant fall in prices, but uh, this, this, this all seems to be quite significant. So basically, if you see all raw material prices have also come down considerably. Generally, uh, across the board, we are seeing um, uh, prices uh, cooling off. Logistics costs have come back to pre-COVID levels, um, which had gone up by five times. So general cost drops have, have happened and are not happening as we speak. So a lot of the vanillin uh, pricing coming off is also because all raw materials uh, uh, pricing in which goes into the raw, uh, vanillin have come down by more than 30 and 40 percent. 
as far as capacity addition goes uh, we are playing in a market where our principal competitor is uh, solvay which is um, a european company and uh, our target market is is really uh, in the us and europe where high quality vanillin um, uh is pre- is preferred and we are, and we and solvay are the only two companies which are fully integrated starting from catacol making catacol to vanillin um and which is which is the reason why uh, they've always been preferred suppliers by in the developed markets and we are you know uh, we are pushing ourselves into that position as an alternative to them okay but our capacity being you know around 20% of the global capacity you think uh, we will also add on to the pressure it's possible it's possible that there would be some price pressure may come but that's that's okay i mean we factored that in okay no because the uh, uh, earlier i mean when uh, we used to sort of uh, discuss some vanillin uh, my understanding was that we used to uh, in our projections we used to take around 16 dollars uh, uh, per kg uh, kind of rate and then uh, now it's come to 14 dollars and with our uh, uh, capacity is coming up, i think uh, the projection should be lower even further Uh, is that the case? I'm not an astrologer, so it's very difficult to answer your question. But uh, our our internal target is that we uh, the pricing should stabilize around fifteen dollars. Around fifteen dollars. Okay, okay. And our cost of manufacturing is around eleven dollars, right? Or no, it's lower than that. All raw material prices have come down, so it's much lower than that. Now. Okay, so yeah, uh, so in terms of EBITDA, you think we will still be around? The, uh, we should make good margins in this twenty uh, percent up kind of margin. Yeah. Okay. And uh, in terms of catacol, uh, uh, we we were making losses in catacol. Uh, uh, what's the scenario right now? It's the same. It continues to be the same. So uh, are, we were sort of uh, losing around one point five dollars in catacol. Uh, uh, that remains the same. No, in Europe we were losing close to four dollars, four four and a half dollars. In India we were losing close to uh, one and a half dollars, and it continues to be the same. Okay. Okay. In Europe, okay. it has come down slightly because uh, raw material prices have come down, so the losses have come down. And even here in India, it's about a dollar now uh, is the loss from one and a half because costs have come down. Okay, but but the Indian losses should so, sort of get absorbed due to Vanillin, right? Yes. Okay, but in Europe, uh, the hydroquinone price uh, was sort of hydroquinone was sort of compensating for catechol. Uh, will that will again remain the same? You see, yes. that continued in this quarter, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abbas Punjani from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, so my question was regarding the vanillin. So just wanted to know the tonnage of the vanillin for this quarter, and uh, that's it. I think we can get the question. Can you just repeat the question, please? How many ton of the uh, vanillin we have done? Per, uh... We have been running the plant at fifty percent capacity. Our annual capacity is sixty thousand six thousand metric ton. Our plant has been continuously running from twenty second of Jan. We have been running at fifty percent capacity. Fifty percent capacity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Harsh Janwar from Centrum PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So I wanted to uh, further know on the vanillin. So, so, so what will be our current cost of manufacturing for vanillin we said it's below 11 dollars but uh, what would be we just answered that question yes sir so uh, exactly we have said that uh, our cost of manufacturing has come down so six months prior from here you said that it's 10.5 dollars just trying to get the uh, more accurate number on cost of manufacturing So it is sub 10. The question which came earlier was whether our cost is 11. We said that it has come down, but it is sub 10 now. Okay, I understood, sir. And sir, on a locket deal, so sir, once we apply the commercial order, 
can you help us understand the timeline when we can expect a bigger order six months or you know what should we expect in terms of next order and I can what's up see one thing yeah you are asking question that locking martin when will the scale up happen on the subsequent order subsequent order will be uh, probably towards the end of fy24 so what's the end of fy24 yeah and uh, uh, and next was regarding you know now that venelin plant is commission so what will be you know grow drivers after from fi 24 so we have not announced any major capex as such so just wanted to get an update on that no so we have surplus capacity which we are filling up on some of the downstreams and uh, vanlin itself will take two years to um, scale up to 100% uh, from a market perspective so uh and and as we go along there are several products uh in our hq downstream which we are scaling up like any hq uh parabenzoquinone hydro hq e chloranil naphthol there are all host of products which um are in the process of being scaled up and we'll add capacities as we go along so i did not understand you said that by end of this year we are looking to reach 100% capacity utilization and then now you said from market perspective it will take 2 years yeah i did not get that you know i said we are looking at we can produce at 100% capacity but the market will define how much we will produce that is what it means okay so for first year we are looking at operating at a lower capacity utilization and That's later right. on slowly moving to 100% Correct. is that right Correct. that is right that is right Okay, sir. Understood. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivaji Mehta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. I thank you for this opportunity. So I had a question on Vanillin. Um, if you can provide some color on the demand and supply situation, um, you know what is the demand expected to grow by, and also is there some new uh, supply that is coming up? There is no new supply. We have we just built a capacity, and the market is growing at about four percent. Right. So also this uh, top line that we had guided for of about twenty five hundred crores by FY twenty five. Now with the Vanillin prices expected to sustain at these levels, uh, you know, would you uh, could you would you like to uh, you know kind of keep the uh, uh, guidance at the same levels, or uh, can this uh, you know move upwards from here? So there is a possibility of it moving upwards, but uh, at this point of time, it's too early in the day to say what the pricing will look like for all the products. Right, right. Uh, also on Lockheed Martin, um, post FI twenty four, um, you know, once you're able to deliver on this order, um, you know, just try to understand: can this uh, be a significant contributor to our top line? Uh, say ten twenty percent. Is that something uh, that Lockheed Martin can do post FI twenty four? Yeah, it depends on uh, how successful their, you know, ultimately their product is in the market. So it's contingent on that, and uh, we think and we believe that uh, they're on a very strong uh, position in the uh, in the technology and in the development. So there's no reason why it will not be successful. If it is, yes, it has an possibility of uh, being more than 10 to 15 percent of our business. Wow, uh, sir! Thank you so much, and I'm wishing you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Navalgun from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my question is also on Vanillin. Uh, so basically, uh, if I'm right, basically Solvay has recently launched uh, the first IFPC Plus certified mass balance uh, Vanillin by end of January, wherein they are saying that uh, this certification is mainly related to. and the better uh, sustainability and also traceability of the peach stock a green peach stocks so just trying to understand whether it will change uh, uh, the demand dynamics wherein uh, at least the bigger company would prefer those kind of products and also second question is whether we are also uh, planning to have this kind of uh, certification in place because uh, like you mentioned uh, 
this is mainly for uh, the developed markets wherein we are also present so just wanted uh, some clarity on that sir yeah so it's a process that uh, we have embarked on uh, purely because um, i mean esg is in itself uh, a topic uh, for conversation which will take hours but uh, the question really is um, in the developed markets uh, every large uh, consumer is looking for a net zero or carbon neutral uh, products and it's an endeavor which all companies are are setting out targets in the next 5 7 10 years to reach that so uh, as long as you have a process and procedure in place to uh, go up that chain and and uh, achieve those targets um uh, i think companies are happy to deal with you sure so thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ankit shah from envision capital <laughs> go ahead um yeah now it is so the volume on your line is very low if you could speak closer to the mic yeah i'm not it's a little better sir yeah is this better yes go ahead sir uh yes sir thank you sir for taking my question uh so will we be uh for the past few years we uh, had uh, acquisitions and uh, Uh, raising of debt this year will we be in fy24 will we be uh, operational cash flow positive and and so we can reduce debt so uh, we will be uh, increasing our turnover also the endeavor is to not go for a huge capex in this year uh, we feel that internal accruals will take care of our maintenance capex which is around 20 to 20 30 crores per annum uh as far as working capital goes for the initial 6 months we may require 20 to 30 crores uh uh working capital requirement but this will be tapering down by the end of the year next financial year secondly we are also um, sitting on the fccb 15 million which is at the option of ifc and is likely to get converted at 105 which brings down around 115 120 crores of my debt all right all right thank you for taking the question thank you participants if you wish to ask a question you may press star and 1 yeah. the next question is from the line of surya from philip capital please go ahead yes yeah. thank you for this opportunity uh uh so in fact i joined a little late so possibly there could be some couple of repeat of questions sir uh, first question is on the um, let's say the stand alone performance what we are seeing in terms of revenues uh, there is a sequential uh, sharp decline it is uh, entirely due to the price correction or something else uh, is driving down the revenue this quarter sir so this quarter um, it's uh, volume and price both more volume than price because we did see some uh, these talking that happened uh, in large customers uh, globally uh, okay. people had built up stocks with us in the last year in the first few quarters and uh, the slowdown started from october and what we saw was that there was uh, a substantial deep stocking in uh, you know ongoing uh, through that quarter till december from january onwards again you know there has been uh a pick up and we expect that by april i think it should be back to normal okay sure uh, so now uh, just an extended question sir uh, to this uh, to understand the growth trajectory for let's say fi24 in 25 better uh, so we have talked about uh, a product like msq could be a kind of meaning one meaningful one going ahead but so far possibly not been a case uh and the now we are having uh, the vanilla also that would be contributing so if you can if you can talk something about your uh, uh, key contributing products going ahead to the growth uh, yeah. so sure so but vanilla as we know um, in the next two years um, we should be able to fill up the capacity um, and that uh, is a is a almost a 7800 crore kind of opportunity uh, in the next two years um 
MEHQ again is a, a key product for us now since we have uh, our own hydroquinone uh, made in the hay uh, to be value added and sold. Uh, so we see ourselves playing um, a very strong role in the MEHQ market uh, because um, you know we package our HQ and MEHQ to a customer. Um, the acrylic acid and acrylate producers require both as a product, and uh, that's the package that we are offering uh, in the market. And uh, since uh, January of this quarter, uh, this year we've started uh, now uh, entering the MEHQ market. You will see traction in the next two years uh, where we expect that we should at least take 50% market share um, in the MEHQ market on a global level. Okay, okay. So uh, so that means FI24 from that angle is a kind of an important year, at least from the uh, from the perspective for these two products, right? Vanilla as well as uh, Yes, and also the uh, focus also will be on uh, two or three other HQ downstreams. So there is HQE, which which is gaining traction again. Uh, HQE, yeah. um, we've been seeding the market for the last one year, and now uh, we've kind of got established in Europe and uh, establishing ourselves in the U.S. So next year, I expect some growth to come from HQE. Then there is Parabenzoquinone, where uh, we'll be, we are launching that product also in this quarter, and uh, we expect attraction to come uh, from the second half of uh, FI24. Uh, there is Nassol, um ARG, which is a yellow pigment, precursor to yellow pigment, yes. which um, also we will be launching now in, by the end of this quarter. So next year you will see a lot of uh, action coming from there uh, because none of the producers of any of these products are fully integrated like us, uh, where we start from uh, basic raw material to uh, the finished product. So there are opportunities in these products, which I think FI2425, uh, we will exploit as much uh, as we can based on uh, capacities available with ourselves as well as the third party tollers and contract manufacturers. Okay. So in fact, uh, again, uh, on that growth aspect, sir, so basically uh, uh, we have seen uh, with the crude normalizing, uh, crude price uh, correcting, uh, the energy cost normalizing across various parts of the world. So the chemical product prices also witnessed some kind of a repricing, which was uh, to the tune of uh, 10 to 20 percent kind of a correction in the prices. So despite that, um, the growth for FI24 would be uh, definitely should not be compromised for us. Is that yeah. the understanding or? Yeah, that is the understanding. In fact, uh, on a volume basis, we expect to grow considerably as compared to FI23. Um, pricing really is not so much in our hands, but uh, yeah. even with uh, with the corrected prices, uh, I think um, uh, also it has had an impact on our raw material pricing as well. Those have also softened. So overall, on a, on a uh, profitability basis, also I think um, uh, the pressure, of course, will always be there when prices come down. But I think with volume growth, we'll be able to counter that. Um, all, not, not only that, but also, you know, like Santosh mentioned in his speech that uh, improving yields and improving our processes and uh, technologies is something that they're working on uh, very seriously uh, through our R&D, uh, uh, you know, through our R&D team. Uh, and we expect, you know, a few percentage points of margin to improve uh, purely based on all that work we are doing. Okay. Uh, well, so that's why we are trying to negate everything. I mean, we know that prices are coming off. We understand that there will be pressure, and that is going to happen in the next 12 months. So we're trying to mitigate it by, uh, you know, improving all our processes. Okay. So just two points that I will touch upon, if you can uh, uh, talk on that. So, uh, so this conversion of a China plant to heliotropin, so where is that uh, uh, currently? And uh, when could that really start contributing to the numbers? Uh, if we can, uh, we can discuss on that. If we can say that. And uh, secondly, uh, even on the uh, LM, so now uh, onwards, uh, for, from the modeling perspective, everybody will start uh, building FI25 also. So if you can give some sense about that. Right. So on heliotropin, uh, we have moved further uh, on our approval process. So uh, we expect the approvals to come uh, by uh, end of Q1, 524, and uh, we'll start work on the plan thereafter. And uh, we should be hopefully uh, 524, um, in, you know, ready with the product. 
so fy25 you will see some um, attraction for heliotropin okay. um, uh, then on lm uh, fy24 of course we've already uh, logged in one um, supply that we need to do fy25 there is some negotiations going on but then we have very limited capacities available right now so our capacities are roughly about uh, 800 tons a year which i think fy25 will get filled up because they already have some orders in the pipeline uh, which will fill that up uh, but the real question then will come uh, during fy24 uh, during this uh, next year is when will um, another plant have to be built and you know on what basis and you know all of that so that's a discussion that will happen i think during this year Sure, sir. Uh, thank you. Thanks for all the answering all the questions. Sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To ask a question, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Jayesh Mistry from Asit C Meta Investment Intermediates. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm audible. Hello. Thank you. Yes, sir. You are audible. Please. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. So I do have a couple of questions on margin expansion and another on growing, like growth growing ahead. Uh, so my first question is like, are uh, we aware about like recently uh, the uh, on a like can say keeping in mind as India's specialty chemical market size and growth momentum is is like uh, almost good, and this segment is growing fast in our country and is further expected to reach around. Uh, please make make me correct if I'm wrong. 60 to 70 billion by 2025 as per process. So, what's your view? So, what's your views in terms of growth prospects uh, and uh, uh, other expansion opportunities coming year? Yes, so we expect to grow at 25% a year, roughly 25% a year, going okay. forward for the next few years. That's that's our expectation. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and, and as we already know, that this sector is highly capital intensive with a long payback period. as you might be aware and and in the recent budget also uh, the measures have been shared by our finance minister shri nirmala on uh, in order to encourage the large capacity expansion and capital subsidies for investment so what's your take on this move by this year budget and company's future growth opportunities in this area i don't think that you are anything much for subsidies for chemical companies so we have to continue to do what we have to do i don't think there are any big shops or uh, benefits uh, which have been offered to us okay so 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 any kind of margin expansion we should expect from uh, like from the vanillin plant and commissioned and dahej running at almost uh, full with expanded capacity like yes i mean that is the expectation that from a loss making product to catechol uh, we can move catechol to vanillin um, it will be margin attractive and there should be a margin expansion once uh, we are full fledged in the vanillin market uh so so my last question is like what should be the growth for 2024 and 25 on the revenue front and ebitda front like like would you really give us some like about 25% like i mentioned okay it's okay, fine fine and ebitda margin will expand uh, as a consequence of that okay okay and as a consequence fine. of that yeah uh fine fine no problem thanks thanks uh thanks for my side okay thank you The next question is from the line of Abbas Punjani from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. So again, one question on Valerian. So have we started supplying Valerian to the clients? No, we are yet sampling. I think uh, Santosh answered that question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratamesh Sawant from Access Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, so just to clarify on my earlier question, so when I mentioned that uh, North America revenues were down 80%, so it was year on year. So I saw that we were have doing 100 plus lows revenue last Q3. We wanted to understand what has happened there and can we move back to that levels in the coming quarter? As you said, you have new orders uh, lining up from Q2 onwards. I think I think you are confusing CFS Mexico with CFS North America. Our Mexico was doing around 90-91 crores. North America always did 15-20 crores. Okay. So, are you asking a question on Mexico? No, no, on North America. So, year back it was you are saying 10 crores. So last last year. 
nine months, it is forty two crores. This nine months, it is fifty eight crores. Okay, okay, sir. And the other question is on the further derivatives of HQ. Uh, we are also seeing certain price pressure on MEHQ prices. So going forward, do you expect these products to be uh, having lesser margins compared to the HQ margins? No, it's a value added to HQ. But uh, from a channel checks, we were seeing certain prices for certain uh, for the uh, integrations slightly lower. So can you just give a idea on? Uh, do you see these prices higher than earlier, or where no, any I mean, HQ prices also will come? All all chemical prices are softening, as we mentioned earlier. So even MEHQ prices will come down as a consequence of. All raw material prices coming down. That's a consequence. Should be the selling prices are coming down. Okay. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we value your time, and we look forward to interacting with you at the next conference call. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Sunidhi Securities and Finance Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.